In this video, we'll review each option in the advanced settings on CodeReader services. A reminder, this step is not necessary for a complete service, and many features are for developer use only. We're on the advanced stage of service creation, specifically for a validation on-device service. If you're creating a different type of service, not all of these options will be available, but are shown here for reference. The first section on this page is for specifying your particular scanning use to improve the speed of scanning. Enable it by checking the box and configure by clicking on Add Scanner Customization. This will take you to a pop-up where you can enter a few different selections. There are actually quite a lot of options for this feature, so we will explain them in better detail in a separate video. For now, we'll move on to Access. This section allows the administrator to control what the app users are able to do and see on their device. These are mainly self-explanatory. Users can be given permission to delete scans if they are not yet uploaded to the cloud. If you have more than one user, you might need them to be able to view the history of others. You may want your users to be able to edit answers on scans before they are uploaded as well. Or, you may want to give them the option to additionally edit scans even if they have been sent to the server. Finally, in Access, you can limit the duration of this particular service. By saying it to a start and stop date, you can ensure users won't scan under this service by accident past the necessary use date. Next, this section will deal with how your users' devices interact with our servers and when. The first option allows you to decide if the device should also have its own duplicate checking when scanning. If you're not relying upon internet connectivity, but you do want duplicate checking to work on an individual device, you'll want to have this box checked. Otherwise, when not connected to the internet, a value may be scanned multiple times and still be marked valid. Next, you might want to decide whether you'll be using manual sync or auto sync. With manual sync, the user must upload the scans to the servers themselves, and the device will auto-check for a new database after an upload. While with auto-sync, scans are queued for auto-uploading to our servers every two seconds after being validated. Validation databases are also auto-synced down to the device every two minutes, provided there's connectivity. You may also want to be notified when your users perform this upload. And, if you are a developer, you can choose here to enable Postback to send each scan to your own server, and, or, validate against a database on your own server. Next, we offer some options for customizing how the device captures barcodes. For developers, there's the ability to alter both the scan value and the response of each scan using a pattern replacement. AutoNext will ensure that the user moves quickly through the scanning process by automatically advancing back to the scanning view. Many customers choose not to use this function as they want their users to have as much time as they need on the response screen. However, if you'd like to enable AutoNext, you have the option to have the screen advance only when a scan is valid and halting when it is invalid, or always advance with the secondary option to discard or save scans that return errors. Finally, with AutoNext, you can customize the delay time before the screen advances. When your user is scanning, however you choose to have them move on from the result of the scan and return to scanning, the camera will, by default, reopen, bringing the user back to scanning view. If you'd rather bring the user back to the tap to scan screen, given at the start of using a service, you can simply disable the camera reopening here. If you'd like to remove the ability to scan with a camera and only use manual entry, or vice versa, you can disable camera or manual scanning as needed. This is useful when using a scanning accessory. If you'd prefer your users not be able to access the database by searching its values, you can also disable the lookup feature. Finally, there's the option to enable kiosk mode. This mode locks the device into a particular service in the application. You will need to set a pin so you can unlock and lock the device so that users cannot move from the service and may only use it to scan. 
We have more specifics on what you can include in your configuration to customize this feature for your desires. This can include custom branding and instructions to help users. You are given the option to attach a GPS location to each scan. This will appear in a map view on the scan records page of your admin account. This will also provide GPS coordinates on scan records. Our last section deals with many different advanced options, most of which are for developer use. The final five options here all require custom code to be input, and thus are for those with programming knowledge to further enhance the application to work for their specific needs. Possible changes include those that can be made to what is shown in the lookup and history sections of the device, as well as custom branding. In addition, there's the option to write your own validation rules in JavaScript. Finally, you can also configure the integration of a printer using the application MobiPrint. Documentation for all of these developer features is available on our website. As a final note, if you do not have access to a developer, but are interested in the advanced features mentioned here, you can contact us via our support email to request a quote for our own developers to write code for your needs.